we're, we're verse 22 chapter 20 wine produces mockers liquor leads to brawls whoever is led astray by drink cannot be wise the king's fury is like a lion's roar to rouse his anger is to risk your life avoiding a fight is a mark of honor only fools insist on quarreling if you are too lazy to plow in the right season you will have no food at the harvest though good advice lies deep within a person's heart the wise will draw it out many will say they are loyal friends but who can find one who is really faithful the godly walk with integrity blessed are their children after them when a king judges he carefully weighs all the evidence distinguishing the bad from the good who can say i have cleansed my heart i am pure and free from sin the lord despises double standards of every kind even children are known by the way they act whether their conduct is pure and right ears to hear and eyes to see both are gifts from the lord if you love sleep you will end in poverty keep your eyes open and there will be plenty to eat the buyer haggles over the price saying it's worthless then brags about getting a bargain wise speech is rarer and more valuable than gold and rubies be sure to get collateral from anyone who guarantees the debt of a stranger get a deposit if someone guarantees the debt of a foreigner stolen bread tastes sweet but it turns to gravel in the mouth plans succeed through good counsel don't go to war without the advice of others a gossip tells secrets so don't hang around with someone who talks too much if you curse your father or mother the lamp of your life will be snuffed out an inheritance obtained early in life is not a blessing in the end don't say i will get even for this wrong wait for the lord to handle the matter the lord despises double standards he is not pleased by dishonest scales how can we understand the road we travel it is the lord who directs our steps it is dangerous to make a rash promise to god before counting the cost a wise king finds the wicked lays them out like wheat then runs the crushing wheel over them the lord's searchlight penetrates the human spirit exposing every hidden motive unfailing love and faithfulness protect the king his throne is made secure through love the glory of the young is their strength the gray hair of experience is the splendor of the old physical punishment cleanses away evil such discipline purifies the heart chapter 21 okay what's the next passage okay the next one is isaiah 40 31. okay Mm. Okay, wait up. Um, I may need your help finding the right book here. Okay. I can you I can find it. It's just right there. You call it Isaiah. Okay. Forty. Chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and that her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her in full for all her sins. Listen, I hear the voice of someone shouting, Make a highway for the Lord through the wilderness. Make a straight, smooth road through the desert for our God. Fill the valleys and level the hills. Straighten out the curves and smooth off the rough spots. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see you together. The Lord has spoken. A voice said, Shout, I asked. What should I shout? Shout that people are like the grass that dies away. Their beauty fades as quickly as the beauty of flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with people. The grass withers, and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Messenger of good news, shout to Zion from the mountaintops. Shout louder to Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. 
tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in all his glorious power. He will rule with awesome strength. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Who has measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed out the mountains and the hills? Who is able to advise the spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to be his teacher or counselor? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good or what is best? No, for all the nations of the world are nothing in comparison with him. They are but a drop in the bucket, dust on the scales. He picks up the islands as though they have no weight at all. All Lebanon's forests do not contain sufficient fuel to consume a sacrifice large enough to honor him. All Lebanon's sacrificial animals would not make an offering worthy of our God. The nations of the world are as nothing to him. In his eyes, they are less than nothing, mere emptiness and fraud. To whom then can we compare God? What image might we find to resemble him? Can he be compared to an idol formed in a mold, overlaid with gold and decorated with silver chains? Or is a poor person's wooden idol better? Can God be compared to an idol that must be placed on a stand so it won't fall down? Have you never heard or understood? Are you deaf to the words of God, the words he gave before the world began? Are you so ignorant? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth. The people below must seem to him like grasshoppers. He is the one who spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root, when he blows on them and their work withers. The wind carries them off like straw. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? asked the Holy One. Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out one after another, calling each by its name. And he counts them to see that none are lost or have strayed away. O oh, Israel, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? How can you say God refuses to hear your case? Have you never heard or understood? Don't you know that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? He never grows faint or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. He offers strength to the weak. Even youths will become exhausted and young men will give up. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Chapter 41. Okay, what's the next? Okay. Uh, Daniel 12, 12. Okay. Hmm. Chapter 12. At that time, Michael, the archangel, who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people, whose name is written in the book, will be rescued. Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky. And those who turn many to righteousness will shine like stars forever. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end. Many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. Then I, Daniel, looked and saw two others standing on opposite banks of the river. One of them asked the man dressed in linen, who was now standing above the river, How long will it be until these shocking events happen? The man dressed in linen, who was standing above the river, raised both his hands toward heaven and took his solemn oath by the one who lives forever. It will go on for a time, times and half a time. When the shattering of the holy people has finally come to an end, all these things will have happened. I heard what he said. 
but I did not understand what he meant. So I asked, How will all this finally end, my lord? But he said, Go now, Daniel, for what I have said is for the time of the end. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials, but the wicked will continue in their wickedness, and none of them will understand. Only those who are wise will know what it means. From the time the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the sacrilegious object that causes desecration is set up to be worshipped, there will be 1,290 days. And blessed are those who wait and remain until the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way until the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise again to receive the inheritance set aside for you. Hosea, chapter 1. The Lord gave these... Okay. The next one is Daniel 12, 12. That's what we're just... Oh, okay. Romans eight twenty five. All right. Chapter 8. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus, for the power of the life-giving Spirit has freed you through Christ Jesus from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses could not save us because of our sinful nature, but God put into effect a different plan to save us. He sent His own Son in a human body like ours, except that ours are sinful. God destroyed sin's control over us by giving His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the requirement of the law would be fully accomplished for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. If your sinful nature controls your mind, there is death. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, there is life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them are not Christians at all. Since Christ lives within you, even though your body will die because of sin, your spirit is alive because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as He raised Christ from the dead, He will give life to your mortal body by this same Spirit living within you. So, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation whatsoever to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you keep on following it, you will perish. But if, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you turn from it and its evil deeds, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you should not be like cowering, fearful slaves. You should behave instead like God's very own children, adopted into His family, calling Him Father, dear Father. For His Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we are God's children. And since we are His children, we will share His treasures, for everything God gives to His Son Christ is ours too. But if we are to share His glory, we must also share His suffering. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He will give us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who His children really are. Against its will, everything on earth was subjected to God's curse. All creation anticipates the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And even we Christians, although we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, 
also groan to be released from pain and suffering. We too wait anxiously for that day when God will give us our full rights as his children, including the new bodies he has promised us. Now that we are saved, we eagerly look forward to this freedom. For if you already have something, you don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't have yet, we must wait patiently and confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our distress, for we don't even know what we should pray for, nor how we should pray. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to become like His Son so that His Son would be the firstborn with many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him, and he gave them right standing with himself, and he promised them his glory. What can we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't God, who gave us Christ, also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? Will God? No. He is the one who has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? Will Christ Jesus? No, for he is the one who died for us and was raised to life for us and is sitting at the place of highest honor next to God, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? or are persecuted, or are hungry, or cold, or in danger, or threatened with death? Even the scriptures say, For your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't, and life can't, the angels can't, and the demons can't. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Chapter 9. Okay, okay, wait, what's the next one? Okay, next one is... Romans twelve seven. Okay. Now, I'm. Uh, hang on, just a minute. I'm not done showing these yet, YouTube viewers. But always remember Matthew six and seven with Mark nine and Hebrews thirteen and and John eight. These can all help you know that you are saved and cannot get lost again and know that your prayers will be answered and also read Luke 6 with that no need, no need to thank me okay Romans 12 7 right there okay. chapter 12 and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will accept. When you think of what he has done for you, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect his will really is. As God's messenger, I give each of you this warning. Be honest in your estimate of yourselves, measuring your value by how much faith God has given you. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are all parts of his one body, and each of us has different work to do. And since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other. 
and each of us needs all the others. God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out when you have faith that God is speaking through you. If your gift is that of serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, do a good job of teaching. If your gift is to encourage others, do it. If you have money, share it generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend that you love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, stand on the side of the good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. Be glad for all God is planning for you. Be patient in trouble and always be prayerful. When God's children are in need, be the one to help them out. And get into the habit of inviting guests home for dinner, or if they need lodging for the night. If people persecute you because you are a Christian, don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. When others are happy, be happy with them. If they are sad, share their sorrow. Live in harmony with each other. Don't try to act important, but enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do your part to live in peace with everyone as much as possible. Dear friends, never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God. For it is written, I will take vengeance, I will repay those who deserve it, says the Lord. Instead, do what the scriptures say. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, and they will be ashamed of what they have done to you. Don't let evil get the best of you, but conquer evil by doing good. Chapter 13. Obey the government. Okay. What? That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, YouTube viewers, I hope you're able to hear all of these passages, but I noticed just before I, pl I played that last passage, I had the camera facing the wrong way. I, I apologize for that, but like I said, whenever you watch this video, I strongly urge you to read Matthew 6 and 7 with Mark chapter 9, and also read Philippians 4. It says, I can do all things through cross to strengthens me no need to thank me but please like share and subscribe